Yolanda. <laughs> no pressure with my accent, American. I hope it will be American enough. Um, thanks, Henrik, for the introduction. But actually, the story is much more dark. Because I'm here to share a trauma with you. Yeah. <coughs> Big, deep trauma that I have from my childhood. And Tango helped me overcome that trauma. Well, actually, I hope it will help me in the future. Why? Because I'm from Spain, yes. I grew up in Madrid. I only moved here a few weeks ago. And I grew up in a very loving and also unique family. Because my parents were, in a way, very traditional. They both have very conservative values. And I went to a Catholic school, of course. But they are also very innovative in their way. Because my dad, he's a painter. He's an artist. And then my mom, she's extremely creative. And she's a doctor. And she has always worked outside the home. And somehow my parents were very aware about the issues of gender inequality. And they were really trying to fight that. And since I was very little, my, both my parents, they were always dividing their house cores equally. So at the time it was not something so typical as you can see today. So for them, trying to pass that to their children was a big, big issue. Sounds great, right? But how do you translate that? Well, actually, my sister and I were not allowed to watch Disney movies. Why? Because 20 years ago, Disney movies were not what they are today. 20 years ago, there was a princess, the nice, beautiful princess that also was kind of stupid without the prince. And she was always sitting around just waiting for the prince to appear and solve all her problems. So you can see the message is not what you want to give to the little girls that you want someday to become really independent. So we were allowed to watch the Disney movies in the cinema once, not to be regarded as a little weirdos. But then at home, we had the real tales of Andresen. And you can say, what? Why? What's that bad? What's the difference? Well, let's try to revise the little mermaid, Disney movie. Little Mermaid becomes into a beautiful woman, meets young and beautiful prince, gets a beautiful dress. They get married, they live together happily forever after. Anderson's story that I was watching eight years old with my older sister, B movie for starters. But then my little mermaid was a woman with a knife in her hands, <laughs> looking at the prince, thinking if she's going to have to stop him or not. If she stops, it stops him, she survives. If not, she dies. Finally, she's looking at him with red eyes, doubting, I stop him, I don't ah! And she dies. Mainly, she dies. But well, actually, <coughs> she does not die. She transforms herself into waterfall. Yes. But you can understand, being little, it's a lot better to get a beautiful dress and a beautiful prince and a beautiful life than that, right? It's a normal choice. But that was not the only thing. For example, my parents also wanted to teach us that beauty comes from the inside. So while other little girls were having Barbies, you know, everybody, I assume, even the boys know what Barbie is, these, dress, uh, these um, little dolls that are very skinny and very pretty and they come with nice dresses and then you change the dress and it's like, oh, I have a Barbie and it's so pretty, you know? Well, my sister and I did not have Barbies. We had barriguitas. What's that? Actually, that means uh, big bellies. And those are short, puffy uh, dolls. And they don't come with nice dresses. Actually, normally, they don't come with dresses at all. They come in the underwear. And you play with them, and they're always smiling. And then you say, oh, yeah, beauty comes from the inside. Yeah, we're so happy. <laughs> but as a little girl, what I wanted was to have a dress. What I was watching is like a ugly doll that didn't come with a dress and I didn't want to die so in my mind I started thinking that in order to survive and not become a serial killer I really needed a dress and it was going to be okay because I was going to do my first communion 
What's the First Communion? The First Communion is a Catholic ritual that you do. You do, would you do it when you're around nine or 10? And there is a big ceremony. And for that ceremony, I don't know why, but that's how it is. Little boys are dressed like little sailors <laughs> and little girls are dressed like princesses with white dresses, like miniature brides. And I was really excited about my first communion. And uh, the boys of my class really wanted to do it because of the gifts and the girls we all wanted to do it because of the dress. And God was somewhere around the question. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I was so excited. I was really, 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 really excited. And then just a few months before I was going to do my first communion, my school decided that it was starting to be a little too much about the dress. So they decided that we were all going to do our first communion with a very white, simple robe, same for girls and for boys, drama. <laughs> and that was that. And my parents, they thought that the important thing was the value. So there was no point in buying me a princess dress for the celebration after. What did I do? Young as I was, I begged. It didn't work. I tried to reason, I'll cook your breakfast. I'll do my bedroom. It was very, very untidy when I was little. I, I, I suppose I even threatened to kill myself. I don't remember, but however, it did not work. I did not get the dress. So I settled and it would have been okay but the day of my first communion, when I arrived, I saw that the other girls of my school all got their beautiful princess dresses for the celebration after. So, worried as I was about becoming a serial killer, about dying, and about having a meaningful life, I decided something. It was okay, because someday, I was going to get married and that day I would enter to the church and I would get stuck on the door because my dress was going to be so big that I couldn't fit through the door and it would be the perfect day and I would be so happy and that was great so I had a plan and eventually I grew up and I moved to Paris to study performing arts there. And that time, I became very contemporary, you know, like, I'm an artist, so yeah, yeah I'm very, I'm an artist, so. <laughs> and I even shaved my head to express how contemporary I was. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt really proud of my parents for not letting me and my sister fell into the system of Disney and the, all that kind of thought, like, I'm a useless woman. And I was so feeling so proud, but I still wanted to get married, and I still wanted to get my dress. And it was a little bit contradictory, but I still really wanted to do it. <laughs> and then tango came my way. Because I started taking this, uh, actually tango in France, it's quite big, much bigger than in Spain. And near my university, they were giving tango lessons and they were free. So I said, sure, in Spain we love free things. That's something that we really love. They were free, so I said, yeah, free, I'm going there. And it turned out, I loved it. I really loved tango. Uh, by the end of the year, uh, when I was dancing with someone that really knew how to dance, I felt that I was floating, that I was in a cloud, that I knew oh, I was the best dancer ever. And when I was dancing with a partner that had more or less the same experience as I had, I felt that I was like a cripple and <laughs> I couldn't know how to move. So that was a little bit where I was standing, but I really liked it. But the best thing was that it gave me the solution for my contradiction. Because in Spain, when people get married, there is a ceremony, of course, and then there is a big feast. And then everybody gets up and gathered together to see the bride and the groom dancing together for the first time as man and wife. And they do a waltz. But hey, I was contemporary, I'm an artist. <laughs> I was going to do a tango! So I was gonna have the dress, I was gonna have the dance, and I was gonna look so contemporary and so traditional, it was gonna be perfect! So that was that. And I was so happy. And then I moved back to Spain, to Madrid, and I did not continue with tango, but I did start something new. I started dancing. I'll dancing also, but I started dating my boyfriend. 
Something that I didn't tell you about me at the beginning is that I'm a dancer. This means that dancing is my job, or at least one of my jobs. <laughs> but it also means that when I hear music, I dance. And it comes natural to me. And my boyfriend, he is many things, but he's not a dancer. <laughs> he was not at the time, he's still not today, and I don't think he will ever be. <laughs> but he's great. <laughs> So we started dating, and I think it was our third date, and I told him, you know what, I want to get married. And he looked at me with big eyes, and he was like, and I said, oh, no, like, not today, like, in the future, eventually. <laughs> and he kept staring at me with blank eyes and said, like, well, I don't. I don't want to get married. So I told him, oh, I said it wrong. It's not that I want to get married. It's that I will get married. If not with you, with someone else. But I will get married, and that's a fact. <laughs> so you can imagine how that was like a little bit tense moment. <laughs> and you can also imagine my joy when only a few days after, he told me, you know what? I always wanted to dance tango. Seems super cool. And I knew right there, right then, he was the one. It was okay, he didn't know that we were going to get married, but we were going to get married and we were going to dance a tango. That was for sure. But also, I'm a, tan I'm a dancer, but I'm also a non-stupid <coughs> woman. I'm an independent thinker. My parents saw to that. And I have a very good mind to anticipate trouble. And I thought, I'm a dancer, he's not a dancer, ooh, ooh, that's not going to work. So I suggested in a very subtle way, you know, honey, you could start going to take some lessons and then you can level up. So then we joined the same group, but somehow he didn't like it. I think it has something to do with his macho ego about I'm a super great dancer, do everything great, you know? So we had to wait a few months and the summer arrived and we joined together a two weeks course for a tango for beginners. I don't know if you've ever been to a tango lessons with it's no so professional with six levels, but like normally you have, it's quite often, a male teacher and a female teacher. So at the beginning, you split up in two and then the teachers start dancing. So they start dancing and normally what do you do? You follow the teacher and you start learning. So I started following my teacher and it seemed the logical thing to do. And then I look at my boyfriend and my boyfriend was staring like that. <laughs> <laughs> really still not moving <laughs> and I didn't say anything because I'm a very supportive girlfriend <laughs> and then we got together to dance and precisely he said I forgot I was like okay so next time honey when you're dancing you try to move behind so then you can try to memorize the movement and get it into your body so we start moving I start moving, I look at my boyfriend, my boyfriend is completely still, but now he's staring at the teacher with blank eyes, so he's going to dissolve him with his look. And I'm like, honey, and he's like, shh, honey, shh, but, uh, honey, try to, ah, focus here, I'm dying here, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. <laughs> Big drama. And then I have to say, to be fair, that he was not the only male dancer having a little bit of trouble. So they repeated again and again, and eventually the miracle happened. We came together to dance as a couple. And he was leading me completely outside the rhythm of the music. <laughs> and it was great. And I was trying to letting myself be led. A part of me was trying but a part of me was resisting. And the part of me that was resisting was the bigger one. <laughs> so he told me like, honey, you have to let yourself be led. But I'm letting myself be led. <laughs> no, honey, you really have to let go and let me lead you. Well, I am. <laughs> and he said, well, the teacher said that you are supposed to let me lead you because if not, I won't learn and I'm the male. So let yourself be led. 
And I told him, well, the teacher said that you were supposed to lead me inside the rhythm. So open up your ears, learn to listen. Once you know how to listen, then you lead. Until then, I'm leading. <laughs> Independent woman, right? Against Disney. <laughs> and that was our two wonderful weeks with love and comprehension and kindness. It was so great that we almost broke up. So, what I want to say tonight is that Tangle is actually great. For those of you who haven't tried Tangle, really do. There is something that I want to tell the ladies, especially the ladies. And of course, never <laughs> dance Tangle with your boyfriend. <laughs> Unless you want to break up. <laughs> or, unless you are in a secret mission and you're training him for your wedding dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>